By the end of today, three children will drown. When I was 19, I almost became a part of this country's drowning statistic. It was spring break, and like most college kids, my friends and I split to the closest beach we could find and afford. We were having a great time, but it wasn't long before we wanted to go to the pool, and I had to tell my friends that I did not know how to swim. However, being the good friends that they are, they committed about 15 minutes of swimming lessons to teach me the basics. <laughs> From what I could tell, they, bit, they did a pretty decent job. And with all of the confidence of a 19-year-old, I decided that I was ready for the deep end and jumped. I found out quickly that in my 15 minutes of lessons, I had missed learning a crucial component of swimming, treading water. Seconds felt like hours, and I found myself in 12 feet of water, rapidly swallowing pool water, flailing my arms, and in a full-out panic. I was drowning. My friends saved me, but my story could have had a very different ending. In fact, based on the statistics, I shouldn't be standing here right now. According to the Centers for Disease Control and, and Prevention, drowning is the leading cause of child injury deaths, second only to motor vehicle crashes. And believe it or not, Georgia is one of the highest in the Southeast for child drownings, second only to Florida. Georgia is also ranked number five for drowning deaths in the country. These statistics are indeed astonishing. However, they are even more dramatic in the black community. Many of us learn important life lessons from our families, things like how to look both ways before crossing the street or how to change a tire. But have you ever thought about what happens when generations of people aren't equipped with the critical knowledge to pass down? For many in the room, the ability to swim seems simple and basic. And you may even question, why is this even a talk? However, this life-saving skill has skipped decades of black families, largely because Jim Crow and segregation laws denied many blacks access to swimming pools. These historical and cultural events have created a present-day situation where black parents are three times more afraid of the water than whites. And eight out of 10 black parents don't know how to swim well enough to save their children in deep water if they needed to. When we fear something, we tend to protect our children from it. We protect them from scraped knees by making them wear pads. We protect them from the boogie monster by checking under their beds at night. And we buy the best car seats we can afford and make sure they wear their seat belts all to protect them in the chance of a car crash. Our goal in this is to prevent the accident, prevent the chance that they may get hurt, prevent the chance that they may die. Being in the water is no different. We tend to think about swimming as a recreational activity when in fact, it's a life-saving skill. The best way we can protect our children is to introduce them to swimming early and often. And based on the numbers, this change is needed now. Nearly seven out of 10 black children don't know how to swim. If they are under the age of four, they will drown six times that of white children. And if they are in middle school, they will drown 10 times more. There are states that are aware of this public health crisis and are doing something about it. Minnesota and Virginia, for example, have instituted subsidized swimming lessons as a part of the school's curriculum. In these states, children are transported to area pools and they about, for about two weeks, and they receive swimming lessons, making them both accessible and affordable. And these programs are working. Statistics show that states that have these school-based programs have half the drowning rates of states that don't. According to a national swim study and report, there are three main obstacles, though, for black children learning how to swim. 
Two of them are access to lessons and cost. However, there is a third reason that some in the room may be aware of, and that's hair. <laughs> I have a daughter who has been blessed with the thickest, curliest hair you can imagine. <laughs> the thickest, curliest hair you can imagine. And of course, she's a great swimmer. So it wasn't a surprise when she asked to be a part of her school swimming team. My reaction, however, to her may be the thing that surprises you. I told her no. Now, I know I've positioned myself as this, water, as this evangelist for water safety and, and swimming. However, the reality is I knew that I couldn't keep up with maintaining her hair. <laughs> let me explain, let me explain. For those of you who may not be familiar, thick curly hair can take three or more hours to wash, detangle, and style. So you may ask, why don't you just wear a swimming cap? Well, the swimming caps that are currently on the market aren't a solution for two main reasons. They aren't actually designed for the volume of hair, and they aren't intended to keep the hair dry, which is actually the greatest need. Because as many of you know, one drop of water on this blowout <laughs> is one drop too much. <laughs> there had to be a solution to this issue. And I was inspired to create an organization whose main focus is to eliminate these barriers so that black children and their families could have a healthy and safe relationship with the water. We are causing positive change to these statistics by partnering with schools to give introductory swimming lessons to elementary and middle school students. So that was a solution for two of the main obstacles. But how did we plan to solve the most communicated barrier? Remember the hair issue? We solved it by developing a patent pending, fully waterproof swimming cap designed to keep thick and curly hair dry. <laughs> the good news is, child drownings, like scraped knees, are preventable. We tend to think about swimming as a recreational activity. However, as we've discussed, it's a life-saving skill. And together, we can bring about the change needed to affect this simply by just providing our children with the necessary skills and resources. Here's where you can help. If you are a school leader or policymaker, support and prioritize school-based learning, swimming programs, and water safety programs. If you are a parent or a caregiver, Commit to learning how to swim and make sure your children learn how to swim as soon as possible. We each share an important part in solving this issue. Now, we all know that just swimming lessons and a waterproof safety cap, swimming cap, can't really save all children from drowning. However, I think we can all agree that if it saves at least one child, that it's been well worth the effort. Thank you.